State of Exception. This is a one school for all lecture by me, Andrew Thomas, at Estfold University College, uh, which I would like you to watch by uh, Tuesday, the 5th of September. So we've talked about how people are organized um, and this week we're going to get a little bit more into why we would accept to be organized. Um, and so it's a question of sovereignty. And considering what goes on in school, um, that people tell us the truth about ourselves, decide where we've got to be in different times. Um, we need to think about why we accept people organizing quite intimate details of our daily life um, and quite concrete aspects of where our bodies are and what we can do and what kind of movements we can and can't do. And Achille Mbembe, who is on the reading list, uh, relates modern ideas of um, this kind of organization to other forms of um, coercion, other forms of people organization, such as the plantation and the colony. Um, but he grounds all of these in a number of different um, political and legal phenomena. Um, but the one that we're going to talk about now is the state of exception. So what does he mean? What do people mean these days when they talk about the state of exception? In order to uh, um, explain this, we've got to get back to a um, story from Roman history. Um, now, and we're talking Roman history way before Julius Caesar, um, after the founding of Rome and, and, and before um, and before the big things that happened that we know about, um, when Rome was a republic. Um, and at that time, Romans hated kings. They'd recently thrown out um, their, their king Tarquin, and, um, and, they, um, and they had self-rule as a republic, not as a monarchy. They hated kings, but they loved dictators. So it, that is the opposite of modern democracies, right? So, or modern democracies like Norway. Um, and why was this? Well, this is the story of Cincinnatus, who, um, whilst there was a crisis going on in Rome, um, was out in his field plowing, doing his general farming work. He had not been particularly active in the city for a while. And the, um, the elders of the city came to um, Cincinnatus and said, can you please save us from this crisis? Our army has been captured um, and is um, in a state of siege. Um, and, and so we don't have anything to um, protect us with. And we are afraid that they are going to come and destroy our city. So Cincinnatus put down his plow, went to the city, um, got everybody to um, to take a massive piece of wood, a kind of stake, um, and just commanded everybody as dictator, which he, because he had been declared dictator for a short period of time, and commanded everybody to stop what they were doing and come with him. At which point he took all the um, residents of the city and turned them into an army and um, and went and released the um, existing army from the um, from the um, from the people who had oppressed them and um, won the battle came back to Rome and gave up his dictatorship and went back to plowing his field and this is why he is famous he famously um, had been offered a dictatorship for a certain amount of time but when the job was done he didn't want to be a dictator for the rest of that time he wanted to go back to plowing his field so the whole point is when there is a, a state of emergency declared people don't insist on their rights. People don't insist on their democracies because sometimes you just need to accept dictatorship for a short period of time. And if you want to know more, it's a wonderful story. I've put the um, the source from Livy um, in the in the reading at the end, um, or you might want to Google it. Um, so um, so we see there is this kind of pattern forming. First, a state of emergency or state of exception. They are much the same thing for our concerns, for our purposes here. This state is declared. So there is a crisis and everyone agrees that there is a crisis. And 
And when that happens, the dictator is declared, somebody who has special powers that we would not ordinarily accept, and, um, and they can require us to do things which um, human rights and civic rights usually pr um, protect us from um, having to do, such as um, being commanded to form part of an army, no choice about it. But also the, limit, the powers are limited. Um, by time or geography or something like that. So there is a, a crisis, there is a person um, who gets exceptional powers, but there is a limitation to those powers. And whilst we would think that this is a failure of democracy, um, these things are actually accepted. And we're going to look in the class at um, more modern examples um, as, as a part of the way we do our modern order. Um, they are a part of uh, modern democracies and um, and they're also it's only really democracies that need this because in a monarchy for example the the king has this kind of power um, and in dictatorships of course they are permanent dictatorships so a lot of people since the uh, in in the past century both on the left and the right of political spectrum have begun to think that actually this form of dictatorship temporary and limited dictatorship is actually at the heart of our democracies it's unique to our democracies they are the way we deal with crises um, we will look like i say at more um at more um examples of this but for now you need to notice this pattern there is a crisis we declare a dictator or a certain um, amount of powers um, which are wielded by certain people and we declare a limit we set a limit to these powers more recently, um, people have used the criticism of the state of exception to talk about other phenomena which are exceptional and but are related to this dictatorship. In the wake of the brutal 9-11 attacks on the USA, for example, George W. Bush founded Guantanamo Bay, um, a detention center on the island of Cuba. It was run by the American government, but not on American soil. So it had the status of a kind of legal anomaly, an exception where civil rights concerning freedom of movement and limitations on de detention um, of people who are not convicted by a, a jury of peers where they don't apply. It was a crisis and we're about to mark the anniversary of this crisis. Um, and emergencies do require special measures. However, Guantanamo Bay has been um, working ever since that time. This summer, the UN Special Rapporteur on the Promotion and Protection of Human Rights and Fundamental Freedoms While Countering Terrorism, Fionnuala Nia Aulan, um, visited the base and uh, 30 of the detainees there, many of whom have been cleared um, for release for some time now um, and yet remain imprisoned. Um, and she repeated calls for its immediate closure. This is America outside America. It's um, released prisoners who are still being detained, enemies but not criminals, in a time when the US is not technically at international war with these people. It is a personification of the state of exception gone wrong.